Welcome to the latest Aviva podcast. A week into the Artemis Transat race, the North Atlantic reverted to type. Grey, cold, windy and hostile, and sometimes so foggy the solo skippers heading for Boston could barely see beyond the bows of their boats. Day in, day out, these are incredibly punishing conditions. Every mile D sails has been a mile gained or lost on the competition. On top of that, there's a real risk of collision with ships or marine mammals. Sleep is impossible, and the effects of that begin to play tricks with the mind. I'm good. Food-wise, I'm really good. Sleeping-wise, all the bad stuff always comes at the wrong time for me. I don't sleep well during the day. And um, I sleep good, like, really well early morning, so that's why it's been really busy. So, um... I'm, I'm trying my best to like just rest in between, and it just feels like I need a, I'm a machine at the moment. I tell you what, if anybody actually says they have proper sleep, I'll be amazed, because the noise of the boat is incredible, as the radar alarm is always going, because it picks up rain as well, and, you know, I just want not to check on everything, so I don't think you ever get real sleep, you just get rest. But I don't think I'm really bad on it. Probably other people will disagree when they see me face to face. <laughs> It gets to a point where you think there's somebody else on board with you. Not because things happen, but because you have these conversations with people or things you must do or you need to remember to do. And if you do it while you're resting in your head, you can then get up thinking, now, did I do that or have they done it? And I swear I've had a couple of days where, you know, there's been someone else with me that I've been having a good discussion with and then thought, now who did I have that conversation with because there's no one here? Now that she's passed through the compulsory ice gate, set to keep racers away from known iceberg limits, Dee can concentrate on the final tactical miles to Boston and on making some ground on her rivals. Well, over my left shoulder is the ice gate, which finally, painstakingly, I have passed today, having floated for about 12 hours. We are now reaching and pointing in the direction of Boston, which is great news. Uh, we're just over a little over a thousand miles left to go, uh, looking at a Sunday, Monday arrival, uh, depending on what we've got. We've got a big blow coming up tonight, so um, that should give us some fast, wet and wild conditions. And then we've got some tricky patches ahead of that. Whatever the result, Dee will be celebrating something unique in this fleet. She will have completed a solo race for the very first time. Here's what she's looking forward to. So seeing Harry and the boys getting on board at a diet coach. So for me, actually, if I cross the finish line, I think I'm going to cry because I will have just finished my first solo race ever. And it will have qualified me to the one day and I will have got a brand new boat across and all these things. And it's just so cool. It's like I finally stepped up to the to the level that I want to be at. I will be so emotional. It may have taken me longer than everyone else or whatever, but I had some days of brilliance and some days of gloom, and if I can get to the end, then, you know, I've achieved a first for me that I've never done before. You can follow Dee's progress and find out more at www.avivaoceanracing.com.